Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Yael Ezra Levin, aka Tommy Kurtad, and I just want to make this video to um, speak my heart to you. I just finished watching um, a series of videos by um, Pastor Creflo Dollar of um, World Changers International here in um, Atlanta, Georgia. And it's, it's obvious to many, even some people that are Christians could see that his teachings um, are false. And I know some of you that are starch Christians and supporters of uh, ministries like um, Creflo Dollar um, will refute everything I'm saying. And I have no problem with that. You have the right to refute it. But anytime you have a man that say he is a man of God and he teach a message that is contrary to the very words of God himself, you have to ask yourself, how, how does that line up? How, how does that work out? For you to say something that contradicts the word of God, yet God gave you them words to say. So now you're basically saying that God is working against himself. That God is double-minded. That um, God is suffering from Alzheimer's. That God is forgetful-minded. That he said what he said previously. Even though he says, no, that he changes not. Even though he mentions the fact that his covenant is an everlasting covenant. Even though he says that through his holy prophets. That um, the covenants throughout the generations, meaning it, it's ongoing. Um, a, a eternal covenant, um, internal instructions do not have an expiration date assigned to it. So um, the videos I, I, were, I was watching were entitled The Danger of Mixing Law and Grace. And one thing that I love um, about watching videos like this is how they hardly ever go into the Tanakh, into the Old Testament, into the Torah, where we see Yah speaking. He, 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 he stressed in the first part, because this is a two-part video, he stressed in the first part of the video that we must listen to what Paul is saying. Not listen to what um, God is saying. And even more shockingly, he, he even stressed we got to listen to what Jesus is saying. Now, if you're accepting Jesus to be your Messiah, to be your Christ, to be your God man, to be God in the flesh, you will think you will lean upon what he said. But no, he wants to lean upon the words of Paul, a man that never walked with um, Jesus at all. Never was taught by him at all. Even though he declares that he was taught by the spirit of Christ. But yet, he does not echo the same teachings of what um, Jesus gave his disciples. It is amazing how um, you say you're following somebody as your Christ, but you spend most of your time contradicting what he say by elevating the words of someone who never met him. So while I'm watching this message and I saw how he was twisting um, the concepts and the thoughts of um, Yah to lift up the words of Paul. Because it is amazing that when you look in the Torah, God himself tells his people to keep his commandments because it is it is life unto you it is your righteousness and through doing it he will bless you but that's not what ministers like um pastor dollar and others say they say the exact opposite they say you are cursed if you keep the law they say if you try to obey the laws of God, that is your own self-efforts. That is you doing the works of the flesh. I have a question for you. How is doing divine commandments that come from a divine God, the Holy One of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the works of your flesh? 
you didn't come up with these instructions. So how are you doing your own works? You didn't write them out. So how is he going to instruct to you? If you're trying to keep the laws of God, you are doing your own works. You are leaning on your flesh. That is not the words of Yah. That is not what Yah says. And one thing I, um, that tripped me out about his message, he said the law has only one purpose. When God gave the law to the um, children of Israel, it was so they could see that they are wretched. They, um, they can't do right. They're no good. And they will see since they cannot perform these laws, and they will finally wake up to the knowledge that they need a savior, that they need Jesus to help them. Now show me in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, where God himself say that's the reason why he gave the um, commandments to Moses to give to the people. I wait. Show me where God tells Moses. And I'm going to tell you the real reason why I'm giving this you know, law. Is because they jacked up and I already know they can't keep it. But I'm going to, you know, there's some death penalties with some of these laws I'm giving. Even though I know you can't keep them. That is painting a picture of our righteous God, of our just God, to be unjust. It's just um, like some of us who are parents. We do not give instructions to our kids. Like, girl, I'm telling you right now, if you don't fly up on that roof, and get that frisbee down. I'm going to whoop your behind. Why are you going to give them instructions knowing that they can't do and then punish them for it? That's the actually the picture that some people paint of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That he gave commandments that they couldn't keep and then he punished them for something that he knew they couldn't keep. Why are you believing such fallacy? I'm going to tell you why I think it is. Like I said, I'm, I'm coming from a background I'm not a novice to this. I was a, I was a Christian for um, over 20 years. I was in the ministry. I was an ordained uh, um, apostle within the church. I'm not a novice to the uh, messages um, within Christianity and the different sects of Christianity. I have been around for a long time. I'm a whole lot older than what I look. I have heard and I have seen a lot. And it is amazing how th um, they would twist the word of God where it will um, really benefit them. Because it's amazing how they talk about you cannot do your own efforts. You have to just trust in the grace of God. You have to trust in the finished works of um, Jesus. And he died for you so you could be blessed without measure. But it's weird. They constantly want you to give your money. But when you give your tithes and your offerings and your gifts of love, that's not acts of the flesh. That's not works of the flesh. That's not your own doing. For some reason, that's divine faith being manifested in the earth to show God and to show Jesus and to show the Holy Spirit that you mean business. That's showing them how much you really have faith in God. But then, but if you try to keep the actual commandments of God that God told you to keep, he already said it's not a hard thing for you to do. You just have to submit to the will of God and show God that you love him through your obedience but no, 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 that's, 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 that's death. That's death. That brings you death. Don't do that. You know, they don't want you to do that. They want you to just sit around, have grace, sing kubaya, be all happy, give your tithes and offering, give your, your, your gifts of love, and just sit back and live by grace, and God's just going to bless you. He don't care how disobedient you are to his laws. That is the biggest fallacy that has our people hoodwinked, have them in prison, in captivity, and exiled from the very things of God today. Because we refuse to submit to the actual words of God. It is a very easy concept to open your Bible and to see where it says, thus said the Lord. But in the actual Hebrew, that the Lord, there's not talking about Lord Jesus, it's Lord in all caps. And in the Hebrew, that's the you, hey, ba, hey, the you, the hey, the bob, the hey. 
That is talking about the name of the creator. That has nothing to do with no Messiah. That's not talking about Jesus. It's talking about obeying the creator of the heaven and the earth. And he is saying something. He is giving you instructions. He is giving you commandments. He is telling you to do something. But for some reason, we're supposed to bypass that because if we try to, if we obey it or if we strive to keep it, for some reason, we're doing the acts of the flesh. We're doing the works of the flesh. We're leaning on our own righteousness. But it is the very righteousness of God that God gave to his people to exemplify and to be a light into the nations to shine and to reflect the very Torah, the very essence of what it, seems, what it looks like to have a relationship with the creator and to live it out upon the earth but for some reason these faith teachers these christian ministers and i'm not gonna say all because i have a few friends that are christians and they teach more torah than what they teach quote unquote new testament doctrine they teach keeping the commandments of god they teach grace they don't teach it from um the mindset that these um people like creflo dollar teach so I'm not going to um, group everybody in the same box because I know Christians, and it's shocking to me, I know Christians that do not accept Jesus as Christ, but they still label themselves Christians. I, I don't know how that's done, but um, that's what they do. I, I know Christians that keep the Sabbath. I know Christians that strive to keep more and more of the Torah while still identifying with Christianity. So the Creflo Dollar, you are destined to never be successful in life. Because he says in the videos I'm watching, when you marry the law with grace, you're, going to, you're just going to fail. And it's, it's amazing how they teach a doctrine of men and will suppress the very words of Yah himself. Explain to me how you could embrace the opinion of Paul over the actual words of God. God tells you to do it. Paul come around and say, you don't have to do it. It's not needed. Trust Jesus. Is that what God said? Is that what God said to Moses? Told the Israelites to, to trust in a coming Messiah who will die for you. Because I have heard this said and I have echoed it myself because as I said, I came out of this lifestyle. I came out of this faith and it was said to us that the, the saints of old look towards the future of the sacrifice of Jesus. And we that live in today look back at the sacrifice of Christ. Now show me in the Torah where Yah gave Moses such such instructions with his chosen people with our ancestors show me plainly no crooks and hooks no types and shadows show me where y'all said i'm giving you a bunch of laws and commandments i know you can't keep but if you would just trust in this future coming king who has to die for your sins. Who will keep the commandments for you. Because you can. not But if you will trust in him. Everything will be well. Even though you will not get to experience him. Because he's going to come. Some thousand or two thousand years after you. But trust in his coming. And you'll be saved. And you know they tell you trust you. You know it's by the spirit. You know, And you want to be faithful to God. You want to live right. So you trust them. And then as a minister, you regurgitate what you have been heard to get so ingrained in you, to get so rooted in you. You start to believe it yourself and you teach it so fluidly. And then it all crumbles when you actually see and what I'm teaching the massive of people lining up with what I see in the word of God. And when I say the word of God now, the New Testament is not included. The New Testament has nothing to do with it. But I will say this. The New Testament has some truth in it. But the truth that's in it comes from the Torah. It is Tanakh based. So if 
some of the things in the New Testament is true, and it's only true because it's coming from the Tanakh. Do I really need the New Testament? I just need to go back to the Tanakh. And Yah made it perfectly clear that he is our Savior, and besides him, there is no other. He never said that trust in me and my son. And you will have salvation. He never said trust in me and my son. He never names the Messiah. We see more respect given to um, King Cyrus. Yah gave his name and his function before he was ever born. But when it comes to the Christian Messiah. Yah does not make such a mention of him. Does not call him by name or say anything about him. But we will have to use the methods of types and shadows and everything like that to say that's him right there. And he's all throughout the Old Testament. Come on, you got, we got to do better than that. We have got to stop taking scriptures out of context and say, there it is right there. That, that, that's him right there. And then when you look at it in context, you can see it was a past event that already passed way before his time. It was talking about actually someone else or, or excuse me, or it's actually talking about animals. Like when it say lambs, you know, the creator was actually talking about lambs as a sacrifice. The creator actually gives a list of what is acceptable to give him for a sin sacrifice or what is acceptable as a sin sacrifice. He never put a righteous man on the list. He never put a righteous divine man on the list. He never put his, his self on the list of what is acceptable unto himself. So, come on. We got to wake up. We have to return back to the words of the living God and follow his instructions, his precepts, his commandments, his laws, his regulations. Because that is what he gave his people. He gave them laws, statutes, and commandments. And he said to love him with all our heart and our might and our strength. And to keep these commandments. Because remember the, the conclusion of the whole matter. Is fear God. And keep his commandments. It didn't say. Fear God and his Messiah. And live by grace. It don't say. Fear God and his Messiah. Live by grace. And forsake them. No good laws. Because they're going to kill you. It don't say that. So why do we embrace a book that forsakes the very words of God himself and then say we're obeying God? God does not work against himself. God does not speak against himself. But we, but we do see Paul saying, I'm giving this to you. It's not by commandment. This is my opinion. And we got people teaching Paul's opinion like it's the very words of God, overlooking the fact that he said, this is not by commandment. This is just me saying it. And we still talk about it's the word of God and that it was inspired. Guess what? You could be inspired to do something and still turn out wrong. I could write something about the goodness of God and be driven by the concept that I have about how good God is and write something down that might have falsehood in it, but I was still inspired to write it. So you got to understand, are you inspired to pen something because Yah is giving you something to pen or are you just moved by the concept and the ideals you have about God? It's two different things. So we have to understand this. Excuse me. So we have to return back to God Almighty, Yah, the Elohim of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And a part of returning back to him includes returning to his law, statutes, and his commandments, the Torah. That's all I wanted to say. This is your brother, Yael Ezra Levy, a.k.a. Tommy Kurtar. Shalom, love, and blessings. Return back to Yah and get back to keeping his, his commandments. Shalom.